my journey with Snehale has been no less than remarkable. Working from its inception with the founder Girish Kulkarni and a committed team of volunteers, donors, patrons, well-wishers. I landed in a sleepy historical town of Ahmednagar after my boarding school stint of nine years in Gwalior. Ahmednagar is a town with facilities of a good tier two city and it has virtues of the village of Bharat. It is the largest district in India, but it is very close-knit with a penchant for culture, traditions, and coexistence of multi-religions. A city of seers, saints, including Sai Baba, Meher Baba, historic capital city of Ahmad Shah, monuments, and also headquarters for Armored Corps and Mechanized Infantry Regiment Corps of Indian Army, and a state-of-art vehicle development research establishment. That is Ahmednagar City in Maharashtra. With my interest in activism, my engineering college days, I was introduced to Girish, who was pursuing his master's, and had the seeds of Snehale sown in the bustling red light area called Chitragali. We were a small group of young dreamers who wanted to change the lives of children living in these red light areas. These children survived on one or two bada pows, loitering in the city all day fending for themselves. They were far away from a formal school. They were far away from tender care of childhood. We started with their evening classes at a center just right opposite the Chitra Gali. Lured them to come for classes by giving them extra vada pals. But every evening they went back to their mother's 80 square foot room. They slept under the bed that the mother entertained her customers in that small room. We realized that these children need to be provided a better environment to bring in any significant change. Girish decided to take them to his own house and six children started living in his house. His parents supported the cause and provided all the help. Later, we moved them to a small center, a small house that we had built around 20 kilometers away from the city. We continued with the evening classes for the remaining children near the red light area. We found out that four of these children were HIV positive and with our little knowledge about that dreadful disease those days, we just decided to put them in a separate makeshift shelter. That was the beginning of the third project. Today, we have 400 children living on campus at the rehab center. We approached the schools for admission, but could not get them admitted because they didn't have a birth certificate. They didn't have a father's name. Hence, we decided to set up our own school. That became our fourth project. This year, Snehale School has been rated amongst the world's top three schools by T4 Education UK. The other two schools in this category are from Jerusalem and London. Our children residing in rehab center, as well as children from the nearby areas, study here in this school. India's urbanization journey had just started. Slums had become reality of city life, and Ahmednagar was not far behind. We observed that the slums were 
feeder of all nefarious activities, whether it was recruitment for terrorism, bootlegging, prostitution, addiction, and many other vices. We stated that we need to do something in the slums. Hence, we started a program called After School Program in the Slums, which has now grown to be in seven different slums. This was our sixth project. And there, the children come after the school, they finish their homework, they play, and they find a safe, healthy environment. During vacations, the center operates the whole day so that children are actively engaged while their parents go to work to earn their daily wages. By the time the city had started recognizing this organization and for different social issues, people would reach out to us. We started receiving calls about abandoned babies who were found in dumpsters, hospital premises, police stations, temples, and other public places. We decided to start an adoption center. Our seventh project, Sneangur, has grown to be India's largest adoption center. Over 200 babies have been adopted by families, and our, grow our babies are right now growing in 18 different cities. We were in the early days of IT revolution, more communication and information exchange had started. The world was becoming flat. Large number of people started getting to know us. And that is the time when we thought that we can have an entity in UK and in US. Snehale US was formed. Snehale UK was formed. Thereafter, we thought that our eighth project was to set up a 24 by 7 helpline. This helpline rescues children from trafficking, exploitation, and child marriages. It eventually became part of the national network of Childline. We uncovered a large sex racket of minor girls, and 20 people were inducted for life imprisonment by the Aurangabad High Court. After four years of relentless follow-up with police and judiciary, domestic violence has been an unsolvable issue. And with our ninth project, Sneha Adhar, we have tried to address this in Ahmednagar district with the support of various NGOs and corporates. Women stay at our short stay facility, get counseling, legal and medical support, Numerous outreach programs are being conducted. Today we have different projects, 24 different projects, including a farm for HIV patients and families, working girls hostel, agripreneurship center, a vibrant community radio station called Radio Nagar FM channel, a 30-bedded hospital, a skill development center, Yuva Nirman Kendra. The two projects I would like to bring to your attention is Manas Gram, that is going to be a facility for addressing mental health issue. We have a small setup for curing mentally ill patients that we pick up from the streets, treat them, and repatriate them back with their families. We started during the COVID period. This is now going to be a 200-bedded center as we are constructing the facilities. The another initiative, one that, that will intrigue all the young children here in this auditorium, is that we took up a cycle rally for 1,500 kilometers from India to Bangladesh, a goodwill cycle rally. It went to Nawakali Gandhi Ashram. So many people from India took the message of peace, harmony, and global living to this historical town that has never witnessed unprecedented riots 
during the partition which we all know about. The senior member of parliaments and law minister of Bangladesh hosted the cyclist. The Indian ambassador in Bangladesh, Mr. Pranay Roy, hosted the cyclist at Dhaka. Key learning was to learn to forgive and peace can be built only on the foundations of conversations and pluralism. Thanks to Major General retired Jeevan Das, Chairman of Gandhi Trust, for helping us put together this historical cycle rally. We have taken up issues that are current and relevant. So is the issue of climate change. We are working on planting a 40-acre forest in Shahpur Thane district near Mumbai, where we will set up a sustainable living demo center, where school children can do field trips to the forest and get inspired to take care of the planet and the environment. I feel Snehale is like an open source platform where people come from different walks of life, ethnicity, religion, faith, with a common architecture of doing good for the society, celebrating life with their own ideas that are current and relevant. Over 2,000 volunteers visit us every year. More than 400 employees work here. 30,000 individual donors support from large corporates and uncountable beneficiaries. Every baby at the adoption center has a story. Kajal and Rama was left on the bridge by their single mom, but now they are being adopted by a family in Sweden. Shanti survived the gas cylinder explosion, but lost both her parents. Today, Shanti has been given the best surgery by her new set of parents, and she lives in Texas, U.S. I just met baby a few days back whose mother has left her because of their divorce as she wants to focus on her IT career. The Sarpanch called us to hand over an infant who was abandoned in a sugarcane field, and the story goes on. At 24 by 7 Helpline, we have rescued women from their own kins who have sold them in Kamathipura Red Light area. We have given shelter to unmarried mothers, rape victims, who have delivered their baby and have been assimilated back in the society. My daughter asked me, Aparajita, what have we learned over these 30 years? One, we need to respond to situations and not just react. This is our definition of being proactive. Social problems are multi-layered and each of the layer needs to be solved and addressed. People need to be developed and nurtured. When I was heading campus hiring globally for Wipro, we used to recruit 12,000 young employees from colleges from different streams every year. The most important thing we looked for while hiring is whether the candidate is willing to learn. In the social sector, this applies more and gets further amplified and also the willingness to collaborate and work in a team. NGOs are not the highest paying jobs, hence passion trumps all other requirements. That hunger to make a change and impact is critical. We have had employees working for over 20 years because they love doing what they're doing. Every system has good people. We work closely with the police, with the legal system, and the regulatory bodies. And believe me, we have found our supporters from these quarters. There are people who want to make a difference. There are people who recognize good work, and they rally behind you. There is never enough money to fund these programs, but there is never paucity of funds. There are people and corporations to support you, provided they see the resilience and commitment to the cause. 
as my previous organization's chairman, Mark Benioff from Salesforce said, businesses are the biggest platform for change. So identify them and seek help from such organizations. Today, as I address this young gathering, I would say there is never a time when everything is perfect to start an initiative. It will never happen that all the stars and resources are aligned. Hence, we say that some level of foolishness is required. It helps you to take a plunge to <clears throat> then go through the journey. So start early in life and start giving back today in any municipal farm as life is short and a lot has to be done. I will end with a few lines from my favorite Hindi book, Rashmi Rathi by Sri Ramdhari Sindhinkar, who was born in Sivariya, a village next to my village in Jagatpura in Begusarai, Bihar. Such hai vipatti jab aati hai, kayar ko hi dehlati hai. Shurva nahi vichlit hote, shani ek nahi thi raj khote. Bigno ko kale nagate hai, ka do me rah banate hai. Jab vigne saamne aate hai, sote se hame jagate hai. Man ko marodate hai, pal pal, tan ko jhanjorate hai, pal pal. Satpat ki or lagakar hi, jate hai hame jagakar. Thank you.